The Quality Control Group in StatTools provides a Pareto chart for displaying the main causes of problems. It also provides the most commonly used statistical process control charts for detecting whether a process has gone out of control. This video illustrates the possibilities. A Pareto chart is very simple. It takes a list of failure counts, such as the one you see here, and it graphs them in decreasing order of frequency. This allows you to see the main causes of failures. To create this chart, you select Pareto chart from the Quality Control dropdown, and you fill in the dialog box as shown here. Note the option to merge causes with small counts. Here is the resulting graph with the tallest bars to the left. The miscellaneous bar is for the merged group. Statistical process control charts of various types have been used for many years, both in manufacturing settings and increasingly in service settings. The purpose of these charts is to monitor a process so that abnormal conditions can be spotted immediately and corrective action can be taken. All of the versions of control charts have a similar look and purpose, and only the details differ from one type to another. Probably the most common types of control charts are the X-bar and R charts, which usually come as a pair. In this case, a small sample of items is measured periodically, such as every 15 minutes or every half hour and for each sample, an X-bar and an R are calculated. X-bar is the average of the observations, and R is the range of the observations, that is, maximum minus minimum, which is used as a measure of variability. The data set shown here is a typical example, where the sample size is 5. The X-bar values are plotted on one chart, and the R values are plotted on another. If the process is in control, both charts should be, quote, random around a center line. There are a number of out-of-control indications. The simplest is that one or more points are beyond upper or lower control limits, approximately plus or minus three standard deviations from the center line. Other indications include long runs of points above the center line or runs below the center line, long sequences of increasing points or decreasing points, and others. StatTools flags these out-of-control conditions on the charts. To create these charts in StatTools, you select XR Charts from the Quality Control dropdown, and you fill in the dialog box you see here. As you can see, there are a lot of options. You can request both types of charts or only one of them. You specify the observations in each sample. In this section, there are several kinds of out-of-control conditions you can ask for. You can limit the graph to just some of the samples, and you can base your calculations of the center line and the upper and lower control limits on all the observations, on observations in some range, or even from previous data. For example, you could base these on observations 1 to 30, and then using this period as the base period, graph the observations from period 31 on to see if the process stays in control. I'll accept the defaults for right now. And here are the graphs. It is common to view the R chart first. The reasoning is that if the variability is in mean control, there is less interest in the averages. In this case, both charts look fine. At least no points are beyond the control limits, the dotted lines. The stat tools output also includes a table of detailed data that the charts are based on. I will now fill in the dialog box to illustrate other options. I'll check all of these conditions. For example, the Zone A and Zone B tests 
state that there shouldn't be too many nearby points beyond one or beyond two standard deviations from the center line. I will limit the graph to observations 31 to the last one, 70, and I will base the center line and control limits on observations 1 to 30. There is the R chart. You can see a couple of points above the upper control limit. Remember that the upper control limit is now based on observations 1 to 30. And you can see a long run in green above the center line. That's indicated right here. For the X bar chart, there is one point below the lower control limit. There is a long run below the center line. And there are two violations of the zone B test. This essentially means that there are too many nearby points that are between one and two standard deviations below the center line. These results warrant further investigation by the manager into the possible causes for this out of control behavior. Besides the common X bar and R chart combination, Stat Tools provides P charts, C charts, and U charts. P charts are for checking the proportion of non-conforming or defective parts over time, such as each hour. In the example shown here, 75 items are examined each hour and the numbers non-conforming are listed. The P-Chart dialog box is fairly straightforward. However, there are a number of options for the data format. Here I will specify a common sample size of 75, and then all I have to check is the number that are non-conforming, the counts, and specify that they are counts, not fractions. I will put a couple of conditions here to check for, and you can see that the resulting p-chart has no out-of-control indications. The last two types of control charts C charts and U charts are very similar. They are both used to track the number of defects, such as the number of paint blemishes on the hood of a car, over time. The difference is that a C chart does this for units of a fixed size, such as units with a common square footage, and a U chart does it for units of varying sizes. Here's a typical example where a C chart can be used. All units have 66 square feet. The Stat Tools dialog box in this case is straightforward. The only variable that needs to be checked is the one that records the number of defects. I will again check for runs up and runs above. And you can see that there are no out of control conditions. Note that the lower control limit is at zero. It can't be negative because this wouldn't make any physical sense. This data set is a typical example for a U-chart. The rate in column E has been calculated as the number of blemishes divided by the number of square feet. This isn't really necessary. If the dialog box is filled in as shown here, StatTools uses the values of the two specified variables, square feet and blemishes, to calculate the rates, and it plots these rates in the control chart. As before, this control chart shows no out-of-control conditions. Note that its upper control limit is not constant. This is because of the unequal square footages. It is important to realize that the purpose of control charts is to check whether a process is predictable as the famous quality control guru W. Edwards Deming preached, a process can't be improved until it is in control, and hence predictable. However, this is just the start in process improvement. For example, a process that consistently produces 25% defectives is in control, it is predictable, 
but it isn't any good. The next step is to make improvements to the process so that the percentage of defective parts decreases. In fact, this is the goal of Six Sigma initiatives made famous in companies like Motorola and others. Nevertheless, as improvements are made, control charts should still be used to ensure that the process is predictable. Of course, in this case, it should be predictably better.